and then we find through conversation someone finds out what we do for a living okay yeah. we're a hypnotist ideally have you ever had that as a part of your social yes. interactions anyway yes okay. yes i have hypnosis tends to have a lot of curiosity behind it as soon as that word hypnosis comes out you're going to find it starts an easy conversation for us whether it's good or bad it really doesn't matter okay yes but as soon as we say we're a hypnotist we start to spike up people's curiosity it'll be the same if you're in a social context and someone said they were a magician yeah if you found out someone you just met was a magician what would be the first thing you would ask this uh, from this magician? Show me some magic. Show me some magic. What about a comedian? Um, I'll say something funny. Or... Yeah, tell me a joke. <laughs> yeah, okay. tell me a joke. So if we're using the context of hypnosis, what do you think people could possibly ask us or what do you think people are going to be thinking because we're a hypnotist? Can you make me quack like chicken? <laughs> yeah. Can you show me something? Can you hypnotize me right now? Yeah. I don't know how many times I was approached by friends or people that I've just met and found out what I did. Say, oh, can you hypnotize me? Can you? Can I try something? I've been really curious about it. Yeah, yeah. And that's something we all should be looking forward to as a hypnotist. And it's why we put a lot of emphasis when we say to take hypnosis with you everywhere you go. And we have that advantage as conversational hypnotists. Okay? Yes. So how does this all work for sales? Well, this is the context we find ourselves in. We're in a social gathering and someone has approached us or a group of people have approached us or maybe you're at a dinner party. And at the dinner party, someone says, what do you do? And you say, well, I'm actually a hypnotherapist. It's going to get people's attention. Okay. So mm -hmm. let's discover what the majority of us will do that could destroy this unique opportunity. And it's going to sound like this. Let's say you have come up to me and we've just introduced each other. And he said, oh, I heard through a friend of ours that you're a hypnotherapist. That's pretty cool. Can you show me something or can you tell me about it? Mm -hmm. And I say something like this. Absolutely. Well, hypnosis is all about learning how to unblock your unconscious mind. I've done three or four years worth of training. I've seen this many type of clients. And what hypnosis is really about is nothing about mind control. It's nothing about clucking like a chicken. It's really about getting someone in touch with their unconscious mind. Now, what are the advantages and disadvantages to what I've just said right now? Well, it's boring. Thank you. <laughs> it's, I'm not interested about your training. And Thank you. I, I just want to know if you can hypnotize me. Thank you. And this is important. Now, you might be sitting at home thinking, well, I never say that. I can guarantee at one point you will go into that out of desperation to know what to do next. And what I mean by this, I, we instantly want to impress people with our skill. I did the same mistake. And so times. did I. And this is why we put this as a part of the training to overcome what the majority of us go ahead and do. Coaches will do this. NLP practitioners yeah. will do this. Therapists, hypnotists are renowned for it. Okay. Now, it's not to say what we're doing is wrong because it is a vital part, but it's in the wrong place, okay? Mm -hmm. And like you said before, it is boring and you don't care. Mm -hmm. There is something we do as human beings, bar none, that we all enjoy the rest of the most, which is we love to talk about ourselves, do we not? Yes. Okay? We love to, at any opportunity, give our experiences give our negations, start an argument, get our point across, and we have every right to. Yes. So we're going to use the way we are socially born into the world and use it to our advantage. The mm -hmm. first thing we need to understand is when we're telling someone, as we as the hypnotist and you're a potential person just curious about it, is I need to automatically stop telling people about me. People do not care about me personally. People do not care about my trainings. People don't have any idea about what the training is about or even any of the um, establishments where I've done training. They've never heard of any of this. No, or conscious, unconscious mind. A lot of people have no idea about it. That's right. No one has an idea. So if you go into a long spiel about what the conscious mind does, what the unconscious mind does, how the government used to use hypnosis experiments, how... Uh, the TV shows are nothing about what you do as a hypnotist that are on uh, TV right now, all of that sort of stuff, 
goes on yep. deaf ears. Why? Because the person sitting in front of you does not care. No. Okay? We have to get that out of the bat straight away. Okay? You might be lucky enough to inspire someone to ask more questions, but there is an easier way to do it, and this is where we're heading into first. Okay? Mm -hmm. So let's say, for example, we had to find out socially what society thinks about hypnosis. What? Let's uh, gather some uh, some ideas. When people hear the word hypnosis or hypnotherapy, what's the first thing that usually comes to people's minds? Mm, whatever they've seen on TV. Excellent. So I've seen stuff on TV, okay, which we know has nothing to do with what we do. No. What else does society think of when the word hypnosis is talked about? Can you control me? Can you control me? Can you control me? me? Is it mind control? Yes. What else? In which direction are we going? Well, it's all <laughs> probably only going to be in the negative. Let, let, let me give you this one. These are the most common ones. Someone asks you about hypnosis and says, oh, can you tell me about it? And you get them telling about it and then they say something like this, I don't believe I can be hypnotised. Hmm. Or hypnosis doesn't work, it's rubbish. Yes. Okay. I had a friend who got hypnotised and got stuck in hypnosis and she sat in there for hours and got really scared. Yes. You've heard all these complaints and you've heard all these societal conditions that people have labelled hypnosis to be. Why? Because that's what is seen. Yes. Or negative, wouldn't we say? Yes, and stage hypnosis on TV is uh, uh, horrible, and yeah. people are afraid. I can, um, if I can use hypnosis, I will make them quack like chicken. That's right. People are afraid of it. So, what this does is puts us in an awkward position. And again, when I say a majority of us, I'm going to put myself in in the shoes where. Um, what I did at the very start when I was starting out. So people would say things like that. People would say, oh, it's scary. I can't be hypnotized. I don't believe in it. The most common one, is it actually real? Okay. Yeah. All these labels or these misconceptions that get put on it are just objections. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, what I went into was when someone says, I don't believe hypnosis is real, I go into an argumentative stage and go, yes, it is. I've done all the trainings. I know how to hypnotize people. Of course it's real. It's about this, 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 and this. Now, I tell this to the person listening, and what does that person say? I know it's not real. <laughs> You're lying to me. I, yes. I tried to get hypnotized before, and it didn't work. And I say, yes. well, maybe you didn't go to a good therapist, or maybe you weren't willing to participate. What's occurring right now? Conflict. Conflict. We're Inside. arguing. Yes, not a very pleasant experience. <laughs> Thank you. Can you see how quickly we can go from a golden opportunity of someone asking us about it to arguing yes. and butting heads? Yes. Okay, I've done it. You just said yourself you've done it, and a lot I of people it. listening will have done it thinking they're doing the right thing. Now, I do want to point out there's no right or wrong. There's just a better way to do things. Yeah. So if we were going to use the analogy of the sad room or the happy room, what room are we both in while we're arguing? Now, the sad room. Very sad bit room. experience. <laughs> so how could you expect to get a client with all the misconceptions, all the wrong ideas, and all the wrong conclusions about hypnosis before you clear them? How can you expect someone to pay money to you as a therapist, no matter how good you are, if all of the thoughts are in the wrong room? Do you see where we're going right now? Yes. We need to take them out of the bad room, put them in the good room, and then sell to them. Why? Because all the pleasant experiences are in the good room, all the objections and the misconceptions about hypnosis are in the wrong room. Make sense yes. of where we are right now? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Any questions from that so far? That just lays down the foundation for where we're headed. No. Okay. Makes sense. So how do we do this? Well, we need to understand something about hypnosis. We need to, or this is the time when I can say we're going to assume, because assuming in this sense of selling our business as a hypnotist or using hypnosis protocols works in our favor. The first thing I want you to remember that as soon as someone comes up and asks about hypnosis or is curious or says, can you show me something or uh, what is it all about? I want you to assume that they're in the bad room. 
Okay. Why would we do this? Well, you may as well clear what we're going to do. We're going to get into clearing the mind. You may as well take the advantage of assuming they're in a bad place, put them in a good place so you know they're there yourself. You're not just assuming that they could be there. Does that make sense? A lot of sense, yes. Okay, and it will make more sense when we learn how to do it and the process is very, very simple. It's understanding like everything we've done in hypnosis so far, the mindset is more important than the techniques. Okay. Yes. So this person's come up to us and says, uh, I'm very curious about hypnosis. And we know to not start to tell them the good things about hypnosis. Why? Because we need to understand what are their thoughts about hypnosis? What room are they in? Are they in a room where they can actually accept what I'm about to tell them? Or are they going to listen to my long two, three, four, five minute spiel and then argue it back to me? <laughs> exactly. Okay, so we are going to assume this person coming up to us is in the wrong room. Okay, the sad room. They're in the wrong room to, uh, to listen to our information and possibly be influenced in a positive way. So if we're not going to tell them about us, but we want to keep this conversation going, what should our first step be? And this gives us our first exercise. What should our step be? I don't know. I'll tell them, yeah, um, agree with them. I know that I like when people agree with me mm -hmm. for whatever reason. Yes. And yes. just show them something. Yeah, we could show them something. Absolutely. Okay. What else could we do? And this is a, it's going to be a part of it. We're not at that stage yet. We are going to make showing ideally would be the best place for us to go. But I want to yeah. do some things, put some things in place. And when we do show them, it just takes them out of this world and it gives them such a great experience that they remember it for the rest of their life. Okay. What else could we do? Knowing that people like to talk about themselves. Yeah, get the conversation going and ask them where they got the idea from that it doesn't work. Excellent. Okay. So back that up one more little. All we know right now is a client has come up to us or a potential client has come up and said, oh, I heard you're a hypnotist. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we might get some more information from them. I say, I heard you're a hypnotist. Can you tell me more about it? How do we keep the conversation going but take control of the conversation, which is important? If we go into just telling them, we know they're not going to listen or even understand no. what we're telling them. How could we change the circumstance around so they talk more about themselves and we do less work? What could we do? Yeah, tell me what you know about hypnosis. Excellent. Simple as that. Instead of answering their question, ask a question about their curiosity. Mm -hmm. See how quickly that can go from them talking about them compared to us talking about us. Yes. Now, by asking them a question and getting them to talk and find out more information, who is in control of the conversation now? I am. So we can direct it. Does that make sense? Yes. So instead of directing it to the sad room, which which direction are we going to take this conversation? Well, happy room because they're talking about themselves. And regardless if it's positive or negative, mm -hmm. they're happy because they're talking. So do you see right now we have an advantage just from that one small thing? Yes. We stop telling people about ourselves, stop telling people about our certificates, how many clients we've seen, how much money we charge, this, that, or the other. Your yeah. goal right now is to take them from a bad place and all the misconceptions we're about to find out to see if they actually have them and direct their attention and the conversation towards you booking them in and possibly gaining a, a clear experience of what hypnosis is about, okay? Yes. So if we were to assume that this person sitting in front of us has bad misconceptions or... Uh, or the wrong ideas about hypnosis, and they've said to us, I'm very curious about hypnosis, our conversation starter could be, well, what are you curious about? Mm -hmm. Okay, so what we're going to do, I am now going to play this curious person, and all I want you to do is just get some more information out of me, and at some point I will give you my understanding of hypnosis as a person who doesn't know a lot about it, as your potential client, and then we're going to take it from there. So we're just going to get the conversation rolling, okay? Yep. So I've said to you, I'm very curious, you know, I heard you're a hypnotist. Um, I heard that hypnosis doesn't always work with everybody, okay? So let's start the conversation. Let's see where we can take it. Mm -hmm. So, Scott, you're telling me that you heard that hypnosis does not work with everybody, yes? Yes, yes. Well, that's what I've heard. 
Okay. And you heard this from? Um, well, I actually had a friend who got hypnotized. Well, went in to see a hypnotherapist. It didn't work. And they were talking very negatively about it. So I just assume it doesn't work. You just assume that it doesn't work? Yes. So tell me, what do you feel, really, about hypnosis? Have you ever been exposed yourself to hypnosis? Um, no, I haven't. I just, yeah, I've just got my doubts. I guess it could work, but it's just a part of me that maybe thinks that, um, that maybe it can't. And you're doubting what exactly is your doubt? Excellent. So you see how we're having this conversation right now? Yeah. Okay. What we do want to avoid is going into therapy mode. Okay. And how does this sound? And we all do it. And this is a crucial part of our training. We go into like an FBI interview. Okay. It was an FBI interview. You see what I mean? So <laughs> what made you say that? How did you get to that point? Who told you yeah. that? How did you think of that? Why do you think this and not that? So okay. we have to keep this, this is not an easy thing to do. We have to no. keep this conversation flowing, casual, but also add an element of our own personality into it. Okay, let me give you an example. Let's say someone says um, to us, um, I heard you're a hypnotherapist. I'd love to actually come in for some hypnosis, but I don't think it'll work. Mm -hmm. I might say something like, you know what? That's exactly what I used to think. And they go, oh, okay, well, you know, being a hypnotherapist myself, when I first started, I never thought hypnosis would actually work. So I'm just curious, what do you actually want to come in for? So, well, I'm a smoker, I love to quit. Okay, pretty much that's what a lot of my clients come to see me about. Why do you want to quit? You know, what, what, what's, what's wrong with smoking? Well, it's affecting my health. Oh, okay, I understand. Do you see the difference in quality? Yes. Okay, we have to add some sort of personality. And being a role play is a little bit easier because I can direct the conversation in both parts. But yes. what I want to include in this is your normal conversational postulates, a little bit about yourself, more about them, have a quick joke, agree with yes. them. No, right. I get it. Yes. It's, not, it's not FBI, yes. Yes, it's not uh, like a job interview. No, Okay. No. Now, I did say before, nothing about you. You want to ask them about them. But to have a normal conversation, both parties have to include themselves in the conversation. It has to keep on flowing. Yes. Okay. So let's look at this again. Okay. As we're talking to this person, okay, what we ideally are doing is trying to find out their misconceptions. What are their thoughts on hypnosis? So we can start to infiltrate them, break them, but also keep them in the back of our minds. Okay. If we find out that our client sits there, or our possible client says to us, I don't believe in hypnosis, and we go into it and say, well, what makes you think that? Have you ever been hypnotized? And they say, mm -hmm. no. Well, how can you make that assumption? It's a silly assumption. Do you normally have your, do you normally make an assumption on things you don't know about? Quite an argument, isn't it? Yes. Okay. So what I want to do is be extremely curious about the circumstance we're in. What do I mean by this? Let's say someone has come up to us and said, I heard you're a hypnotherapist. I'd love to, you know, get some hypnosis for quit smoking, but I just don't think it would work. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this really? is a very common thing that people will ask you. They'll give you the reason they want to come in, but they'll also mm -hmm. negate hypnosis actually working. Now, if you book them in at this point and say, well, come in and see me, I'm the expert stop smoking in my, in my uh, area, I'll be able to help you. What mm -hmm. objection still remains regardless if they come to your session or not? Well, are you really going to help me? Are you the only one? How about if I go to different area or yep. whatever? That is well. different... So remember the objection they gave us, which was I don't even believe in it. Now, yeah. We have, we have to think to ourselves something like this. Well, if you've come up to me at a party or a social gathering and you've said to me you'd love to book in but you don't believe in it, can you hear the conflict already? Yes. So we almost have to put them in their place and say it could be something like this. So you, you said something like you wanted to book in for hypnosis. Okay. But if you don't believe in it, why'd you bother asking why'd you bother telling me that you wanted to book in in the first place? Yes. Do you see how that could break through some objections? 
It's good, yes. Okay? But we have to avoid again. It can be an argument. These are just different ways no, to play with this good, conversation. Exactly. I was thinking it's gonna put, and, and especially in social gathering where yes. there's lots of people around, putting yes. this person in this position will put him in a sad room. Yep, exactly. So what are we gonna do? We've got a couple of opportunities. Mm -hmm. How can we put all this together to begin a conversation? Because that's all we've done right now. We're just yeah. uh, we're just keeping the conversation going, knowing and assuming that our client is probably going to be in, a, in the sad room with all the bad associations to what hypnosis is. How do we continue the conversation without actually teaching them anything, negating their thoughts and saying, you're wrong, I'm right, and keeping them in the happy room or headed towards a direction that's positive? How do we do this? Without showing him. Without showing him. Okay, <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Any thoughts at all? Let me think. Um, well, I agree with him mm -hmm. that it doesn't work. And just like you said before, yes, I've been there, it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. um, asking what do you think would have to happen for you to believe that it does work. Mm -hmm. These are all correct. Absolutely. What else? We're on the right track. On the right track. Ask them what do you know? We have done it. What do you know about hypnosis? We've done this one. Mm -hmm. Not sure where to go next. Okay. Let me give you one thing that will help. Yeah. Okay. It definitely helped me when I started to do this. Stop being a therapist and be a human being. Have a normal conversation with somebody. Do we not have conversations with people and ask them what they do for a job and just get curious and go, wow, you work in a factory, cool. What do you do there? Well, I do this, this, and this. Oh, wow, my dad actually does this as well. Or my uncle does this. Or I've got a friend that maybe works near you. Or I've got a friend that works in a similar occupation than you. And then before you know it, a couple of hours have gone by and you've had a conversation. Yes. What we do wrong so, as therapists is we go straight into, oh, this person's asking about hypnosis. I'm now going to defend my own thoughts. I'm going to teach you a thing or two. Yes. Do you see the difference? It was just a, a front of my nose. Absolutely, yes. yes. Okay. Um, and this <laughs> is something you've heard often before. We often get students coming up to us in our therapy program saying, what do I do at this point? How do I, what's the best way to create rapport with someone? What's the best way to start the hypnotic interaction? What's the best place to tell a story and all this sort of stuff? We always come back to something simple like have a normal conversation with somebody, only become therapeutic at the very last stage. Only become therapeutic when you really need to. Yes. Okay. Makes so sense. we have to avoid the arguing. We have to avoid becoming the therapist at the drop of a hat. Now, this does take some time. This does take time to put in your conversation because you will have a conversation with somebody and then that idea will flick in your mind that says, hey, I'm teaching them something I shouldn't be doing this right now or I really want to tell this person what hypnosis is really about to get my point across. So in other words, what I'm saying is whatever your client thinks hypnosis is, just agree with them. And then we're going to show them later what it's really about. Mm -hmm. Okay. Someone says hypnosis is scary. Says that no, no, no. It's.